This is this is a trickier chart for Bitcoin. Bitcoin again doesn't mean it can't rally up, but it's just becoming a harder chart because there's more roadblocks being put up. Hello everyone. Gareth Soloway talks about the wild swings in the stock and Bitcoin markets and analyzes the charts and trends. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. Now again, just going back to yesterday, yesterday we saw these wild swings in the S&P 500. I want to bring this up right now. So Jerome Powell basically began to speak. The markets ripped up. When he was done, they ripped back down. Overnight, and this is the futures data, this is essentially pre-market data, we slowly have been floating back up. Now the key is this, the mainstream media began to spin this. They spun this like a beautiful, pretty picture. They said, oh, the Fed did announce that they're going to slow their runoff of, of, um, of assets on their balance sheet. Again, remember what the Fed has been doing. Not only have they been raising interest rates, well, they haven't lately, but they were raising interest rates, but they were also selling massive amounts of their assets that they had accumulated on their balance sheet. And when you sell an asset, when the Fed sells assets, it ultimately works as a tightening mechanism for the markets. So the fact that they're slowing that from 60 billion to about 25 billion a month, that to me, yes, it is a slight way of easing. It's kind of like the precursor to rate cuts, but it's not significant. But the markets, at least the mainstream media, is really making it out like, oh my goodness, this is the start. This is it. The Fed is again starting to loosen monetary policy. And that again is bringing us back up pre market. Now, again, just to give you a rundown. That's basically what's going on here from yesterday's Fed all the way through the overnight. The other thing to note, we did have jobless claims this morning. Jobless claims, again, amazing numbers. And these, by the way, jobless claims, for those of you that don't know, people that are filing for unemployment, 208,000. Historically, that is a very low number. We've been staying below 225,000 for a long time. That's my pivot point on the chart. We get above 225,000. I think there's something that's coming and there's something that is, is in, the, in the works, essentially, in terms of unemployment rising. As long as we're below 225,000 per week in unemployment claims, it's Basically, it's fine. Everything is fine. Okay. So, and by the way, when I say everything is fine, everything is not fine. But at least to the markets, the labor market, everything will be fine for now. Now we look at this chart, guys. This is the chart of the S&P 500. We know our long-term uptrend was broken. We collapsed. We did a retrace to the scene of the crime right here, and we got rejected. Now again, for me, the things that I'm watching here going into the next day or two or even early next week is basically just following along. Does this level hold, and do we take out this low? If we take out this low right here, then likely you're going to see that next wave of big selling that will take us significantly lower. If we take out here and we go up here, essentially the only thing that would change is that you now start to look at having a wedge pattern, right? So if we look at this, and I'm going to put a wedge pattern really quickly on my chart uh, just in case this happens. And by the way, this is gaming the markets. This is what you need to do is you need to game the markets to figure out what the different possibilities are. And then you ultimately choose the one that has the highest probability, and that's the way you trade if you so choose. But you can see right here what I did was I basically connected this low to this low, and we're going to open somewhere right around here today, right? But then you can connect these highs. And so if we do, let's say we do start to trend up, your resistance line is going to be right in this range. And you're starting to create this channel, and then eventually you come back here. And my guess is of either way, you're going to go lower. I don't see a path outside of going lower because, again, with inflation high, the Fed is handcuffed. Yeah, they can do a few things like a little less runoff on the balance sheet, maybe one or two rate cuts, but they're not going to be able to save things when things start turning south because inflation remains high. Now, inflation, by the way, oil is starting to break down. Gasoline is starting to break down. That will help 
but that also sends a signal. When you see oil starting to collapse, and I'm going to talk about this in just a little bit, and gasoline, that's a direct indicator of what is expected in the economy. So now all of a sudden, we're seeing a shift to more of a, a recession expected via the commodities investors. Granted, the talking heads aren't talking about this yet. Everything's going to be fine according to them, but this is something we have to pay attention to. More trading options for today or, or potential analysis. Take a look at Etsy, guys. Whew. This is a tough one. So Etsy again yesterday closing basically around $70, trading at $58.76. That's a huge percentage drop, about 15%, I believe. If we go to the daily chart, there is one level that I'm watching. Okay, so the level here, so look at this, look at this little wedge pattern development. See this wedge pattern? I had to kind of zoom out because we have to go back here. Maybe I can zoom in just a little bit so we see it a little bit more clearly. But basically what I'm doing here is we're looking right here. We take this low here and we connect it to this low right over here and we get a level around $55. So there should be some technical support around $55 on Etsy for a potential bounce today. Um, but again, the stock is getting slammed. There's no doubt about it, but 55 stands out to me as a potential technical support level. Now on a positive note, Carvana. All right, don't ask me why this stock is doing so well. Well, obviously their earnings were pretty solid, but what a move on Carvana, guys. Huge move up. They beat earnings. They, they basically came out and, and surprised everyone. In addition, this is one of the most highly shorted stocks, so there's a lot of short covering pushing this up. But right now, Carvana at 100 and just under $120. Again, because it's a highly shorted name, it could squeeze, so be very careful on this. But basically, suffice it to say, I don't really have a level. There's a little bit of a level here. And again, it's hard to see. Let me see if I can zoom in for you guys. All right, there we go. So it looks like right around 133 to 130. Yeah, 133. There's a little pivot here, right through here. And that line goes right up to about 132 to 133. That would be first resistance. I probably won't trade this today. It's not a big enough company for me to trade. I try to stay 50 billion or greater in terms of market caps, but I do like to give you guys the levels just in case uh, we can watch it. Now, another horrendous earnings report here from Fastly. Now, Fastly, again, is not a big company, but it is getting crushed today. Take a look at this. You can see I have a trend line in here already. And one of the things to look at here, guys, look at this move down. Holy cow. So this stock closed basically at $13. It's trading at $8. That's a massive decline percentage-wise. <laughs> now, again, looking at the chart, where do we get our first technical support? And if we go back to the daily chart and we have to zoom out on this, there's a double bottom around $7.30. Now, we're near eight bucks. That's not outlandish to think we could go down to about $7.30. So just keep it on your radar here that that could be a level. But again, smaller company getting crushed. The smaller the company, the less predictable the chart is. That's just the nature of the beast because it can whip it. it like Basically, when you have a small company and they screw up on earnings, People start to wonder, can the company survive? Can it this? It moves much more versus like if Apple misses earnings today, yeah, it'll have like a three, five percent move, maybe six percent move, but Apple's Apple. It's not going anywhere. So you don't get the kind of crazy volatility that you do on these smaller names out there. Okay, Bitcoin is getting a small bounce today, but look at what we have here. So number one, we confirmed below this line here. This is that this was this longer trend line. So that is a, a, a negative. Now, the positive is, if you're a bull, is that you closed below this channel, but you haven't confirmed yet below that either. So you're right underneath. It's trying to get back above. It is trying so hard. It's already tagged the line. And again, it hasn't gotten there yet, but it has. it's trying. You want to see, if you're a bull, you need to see it recapture basically 59,000. Gets back above 59 and holds there. Then maybe it can at least retrace to this level. But the problem is that's now a confirmed resistance line. So it's tricky. This is this is a trickier chart for Bitcoin. Bitcoin, again, doesn't mean it can't rally up, but it's just becoming a harder chart because there's more roadblocks being put up, right? I mean, you have a roadblock. Well, first of all, there's a mini roadblock here. Then there's a big heavy one here. Then you have this high here. Then you have the down sloping trend line here, this high and this high. More and more roadblocks are being put up 
which makes it harder. It's going to take more and more buy pressure, buying volume to come in. And again, we're seeing the ETFs starting to stall out on their inflows a little bit as well, which isn't helping the case. Now, I've been pretty steadfast to you guys that I said, I said this a while ago, even when we were at 74,000, you know, people were making fun of me left and right. And I said, guys, I honestly think this is coming back into the 50s, maybe as low as this here, this level right down here, right? right here and maybe as, as low as here, which is again, the level is basically 52 to 53 down to 49. Again, we got to 50, close to 55. We'll see if we get there, but that's where I start to get interested myself at accumulating some Bitcoin uh, as I would expect a technical bounce there. Ethereum, we covered our short yesterday. So far, that was a great cover, guys, and I explained to you that it's a risk-reward assessment. Doesn't mean Ethereum can't go lower. It's just as a swing trader, I had to acknowledge the chart was into dual two crossing support lines. And sure enough, we've bounced, honestly, we've bounced about $200 plus since I got out of that. So that's a nice little exit for our members at Smart Money Crypto. Now, again, you can easily, so you're, you're holding support, here's resistance. So you could go up here, but you could also go here. The key is, do you break and confirm? That would be a big drop. Or you can come up here and break and confirm, and then you get the big pop. But essentially, we're still stuck in this kind of major support range on this chart here of Ethereum. Uh, oil, guys, holy cow. Look at this. this is the intraday 10-minute on oil. It's going lower. Yesterday, there was a head and shoulders that broke. It triggered. We knew that we had major technical confirmed breakout, and now that has failed. Everything to me is looking bearish on oil now, guys. This is not good on oil. I'm going to flip over to the daily chart, and whoa. Good. There we go. All right, so here we have it. So look at this. Here you have it, right? So look at this drop. And this was kind of like, so look at the pattern. You guys know your head and shoulder patterns? That's a, that's a head and shoulders. There's no doubt about it. And the line was right at the confirmed support. So once you broke it, this is good night. Listen, and you will bounce. Don't get me wrong. You'll bounce. You know, you, we will get bounces here on oil. But if you do a measurement for the calculation from the high of the head to the line, you get a $74 target. So I got to, at this point, I'm in the camp that we're going to 74. And by the way, the Fed is loving this. They're loving this because this coupled with UG, UGA, which is an ETF for gasoline. Let me see if I can actually buy, bring up the spot. Yeah, the Pepperstone. There we go. So I can actually do this. Look at the rollover on on gasoline. Now it's still significantly higher, but this is how you get inflation down. You got to get oil down and you got to get gasoline down. You got to get the ones that are the ones that are affecting Americans the most. That's how you're going to get it down. And by the way, that's also how you win elections. Just making a point. <laughs> um, in any case, see how that comes down here. We'll see how much more it comes down. But by the way, I've, I've done trades like that. It doesn't matter who's in the White House, but I've done trades in my history where I've shorted oil a few months before the election and it almost always works almost always works thank you for watching the interview highlights of gareth soloway if you enjoy this highlight video please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content thank you